Number eight, here's what makes us uniquely Baptist, where we got our name from, biblical baptism. Philip apparently had uh, correctly baptized them with water and immersion, because we know that the word baptism comes from baptizo, a Greek word meaning immersion. Biblical baptism. Now you say, what does biblical baptism mean? Acts chapter 8, are you there? Look at verse 36. I'm going to show you just real quickly what biblical baptism is. Acts 8, 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Now the eunuch just got the gospel preached to him, and now he's asking, What's hindering me? What's stopping me, me from getting baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, now, mage. So, according to the Bible, how do you get scripturally baptized? Well, it happens after you believe. Because he said, What doth hinder me baptized? And the answer to the question is, If thou believest all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Right there, we do away with infant baptism. Because unless your six week old is able to stand up and say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and understand it, Newsflash, six week olds aren't even condemned, all right? If they die, they go to heaven. Salvation, baptism happens after salvation. Notice verse 38. Not only is baptism after salvation, it's also by immersion. Look at verse 38. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. Notice he doesn't say he grabbed a cup of water and poured it over his head. He didn't say he filled up his spray bottle with water and sprayed him with it. He said they went down both into the water. Why, why did they have to go down into the water? Because he needed enough water to get his whole body underwater. Because baptism is by immersion scripturally. And so we know from baptism, uh, from the book of Acts, the baptism has to have particular, uh, particular uh, criteria fulfilled. It has to be in water. It has to be by immersion. Matthew 3.16 says this, And Jesus, when he was baptized, notice what it says, went up straight way out of the water. Why did Jesus go up straight way out of the water? Well, because he first went down into the water. See, the Bible teaches baptism by immersion. He was baptized and he went up straight way out of the water and lo, the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You will never find any baptism in scripture that it was not done by immersion. Because baptism is a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When someone is getting ready to be baptized and they are standing there and the water crosses their body, that is a picture of the cross. When the pastor then takes that individual and puts them under the water, that is a picture of the death. When they come up out of the water, that is a picture of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. When someone gets baptized, what they are publicly stating is that they believe that Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and that he rose from the grave as a payment for their sin. What they're also stating is that they believe that one day when they die, they will be resurrected at the rapture. When you turn baptism into a pouring on of water, you mess up the whole picture. Biblical baptism is after salvation, it's by immersion, but notice it also matters who baptizes you. In John chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says this, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. What we learn in these verses is that Jesus did not physically baptize anybody. However, the people that were baptized by his disciples under his ministry were identified with him. What we can learn from this is that it doesn't matter who physically, literally dunks you under the water. Because in many churches, the pastors don't do the baptisms. You may have been baptized by a deacon. You may have been baptized by an evangelist. You may have been baptized by an assistant pastor. It doesn't really matter who actually baptized you as long as you were baptized by a church or a ministry that you can identify with. So look, if you're not a tongue-speaking Pentecostal, and you got baptized at a tongue-speaking Pentecostal church, you need to get Anabaptized. This is where we came from. This is where we got our names from. We're Anabaptists. This is what we believe. 